Hey guys, Boot Kool Aid here at Wages World, August 8, 2020, coming at you with a video for the second time. Um, for those of you, the 300 or 400 of you guys that clicked on my video, you didn't have no audio. Sorry about that. Um, I'm having to remake my video because, uh, yeah, I was recording video of some of the data here and I forgot to turn the audio back on. So, uh, yeah, that was not cool. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, it took me about 45 minutes to an hour to do that. And then all of a sudden I just got to redo the whole thing. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and jump into it here. Um, we've got a C-Class flare guys that fired off. And um, I'm going to take you guys over and show you that. Plus, uh, we've got this meteor shower that is, um, yeah, it's a, it's a typical meteor, Perseid uh, meteor shower we always get. But um, this one is a very active one. And um, so, yeah. And I, I, I got like a... a I don't think it's part of the meteor shower. Um, something shot across the uh, Lasco C2. And also, guys, um, you know, we've been talking about seeds, the data that's been missing. Um, you know, Scott did his live stream, and he talked about that at length. And um, he sent them an email, and guess what? <laughs> 12 hours later, bam, it's back up. <laughs> it's crazy. They put all the data back up. It, it's, yeah. So anyway, um that's to be expected with these kinds of whatevers we want to say. So I'm going to start here with this. It says, uh, this is from uh, Russ Bernard, and this is one of the better questions I've had in a very long time. So uh, good thinking here, Russ. It says, are, are there any magnetic anomaly detectors on Mars? Um, you know, the ones that kind of detect uh, solar uh, solar wind and all that kind of stuff, guys. Um, just like the ones we got out there on uh, our the, the satellites that give us the data. Um says, I know its its core is dead, but there are measurements of solar energy hitting the surface being recorded. Are there any of that being recorded on, on any of the landers? Now, I don't know if it's on the landers or not, but I would assume that there's uh, some detectors there. Because they do report on Mars weather. Um, you can do that. Um, now, whether it's reporting on space weather, I don't know. Um, but it's a great question. If anybody knows the answer to that. But, you know, at this point, I would assume that they have some detectors there. But for them to send, you know, these uh, crafts or uh, these machines out there to be on the um, surface of Mars and not have those kinds of detectors, um, that would very much surprise me that if they weren't there. Um, that's just what I would think. Now, I don't think we can access that data, but I'm sure somebody's looking at it. <laughs> but um, great question, Russ. So we'll just jump into it. All right, guys, I got you over here at Space Weather Prediction Center. Um yeah, and like I said, guys, we had a C flare, C class flare. All right, that's it right there. This is the solar X ray flux, and this is where we look at to you know see the the flaring activity. Typically, it'll show up here really really quick. Um, now I do know that it did uh, mess up some radio propagation uh, for a few minutes when this flare hit. Uh, remember that when this flare leaves the sun, it's here in like eight minutes and gone. Okay, these are different than cmes now they do sometimes happen together a lot of times they do more times than not um if you have a cme a lot of times you'll have flares involved in that too um but um like i said before you can have flares and cmes where there is no sunspots the sun can just do it whenever it wants to do it for whatever reason um but um the solar x-ray flux is showing that flare now you can see over here how it's in the middle of the sea it's about a, a mid-range c-class flare is this big deal? No. All it did was, you know, it caused a little bit of issues with radio propagation for the emergency responders. Um, that's pretty much what the, the biggest deal was here. And I'm not sure why that's doing that right there. Um, <laughs> but we'll go ahead and uh, scroll on down here. Um, also, I wanted to show you here, too, that, you know, just because we had a flare does not mean that geomagnetic activity went up. It's different. All right. Um, we're looking at x-rays up here. Okay. That's why they can move so fast. It's not plasma. All right. So this is this right here is geomagnetic activity. Yes, it's risen a little bit, but it's nowhere. It's only at a two. Okay, it's nothing even. Actually, that's perfect conditions, really. Um, it's not too low, so it doesn't allow cosmic rays in. It's not too high that we're having a bunch of issues. But uh, yeah. So here's the sun right now. Um, again, here's the equator. Now. Um, we're going to talk about this sunspot because that's the one that did fire off the flare. Uh, so, but uh, before we do that, 
I want you guys to keep your eye over here because this is also an active region of the sun that's starting to rotate in. And as these other sunspots and active areas rotate off, we can't let our guard down because down here. Now it's going to be really interesting to see what, what sun cycle those are from. And um, with it being in the southern hemisphere, um, we're going to have to pay attention to the polarity of these to see what sun cycle it's in. Um, if it is a sunspot, if there is anything that develops there. Um, and I would also point out here too, guys, you know, in size, when we're talking about size, this one here was way bigger than this one. But this one here had a better chance of flaring because the, <clears throat> the characteristics of a sunspot were much, much better. Okay, it was more compact. The, the, the core... At the at the surface of the sun was really defined it had you know very clear positive negative I mean it was really easy to, to spot um, this one over here did not um, it did for a minute but it it still it died off really quick and also these things can you know they can survive a lap around the Sun guys sometimes too um, so they could stay active all that time now chances are probably not especially this early in the Sun cycle um, so, you know, and this is what I'm talking about, guys. You know, this, this size flare we just took, really like in a, mi a middle C-class flare, you know, in five years or four years, it might not even have messed up radio propagation because our magnetic field might be stronger then. So, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, if we got, if we got some protection and, and our shields are, are built back up the way that they need to be, which I don't think they're going to get there. Just so you know, um, you know, the trend was down already. Okay. And, um, and until we start seeing data of it increasing again, it's going to continue to decay. And, um, I don't know what's going to take to get it back, but, um, you know, this little energy we're getting right now is actually could help us. Okay. Um, other than that little radio blip that was happening. Okay. But, um, as we go down through here, you're going to see, and I do think it's a, an interesting coincidence that that flare happened right at the time of the radio blackout <laughs> of the data on the ACE. That's normal, guys. That's that's when that stuff happens. It, that that was going to happen whether there was a flare there or not. It's just it ain't able to uh, receive the data and stuff. It's, the satellite's in a position that it can't do its job. So anyway. Um, here's the Enlil model, and um, what you're seeing here is, um, if you remember right, um, I was talking about, hey, we might have some more weather here in a few days from that coronal hole. And at first, they were predicting this little hump here to actually be, like, here. So whatever happened there, they pushed it back a couple of days. And they do that a lot. This thing changes when it gets updated data. It'll be, ch it'll be uh, uh, interesting to see if this thing changes with the, the solar flare that just happened. So, okay, and again, guys, here's seeds. Now, remember yesterday I took you guys over here and showed it to you, and all these were gray, which means there was no data for none of it. And, and it all got uploaded back. And it's, you know, for me, it's too much of a coincidence that we were just talking about it, and then Scott sent that email. Now, all of a sudden, bam, it's back up here. Whether they were just lagging behind or whatever that whatever their issue was, they added it all back at once. So all that data that was missing is now here. Now, you know, whenever that happens, we always question on what the heck is going on. You know, did they mess with it? Did they do this? Did they do that? What was the reasoning? Or was it just simply something that fell through the cracks? Because that does happen. But in this instance, I don't think so. Um, unless they were just far behind or whatever, uh, you know, staffing or <laughs> however you want to put that. And then they got that email and from Scott, and they decided, hey, man, we better get this back up because the tax dollars do pay for this. So, you know, whether anything has ever happened that way, I don't know. But I, do, I don't think it's a coincidence that we were just talking about this, and then they get an email, and all of a sudden, bam, it's back up. Um, so <laughs> I would uh, venture to say that has something to do with it. But, yeah, so we're over here at Soho, and... Um, we're going to take a look at Lasco C2 on the 7th because, uh, and as you can see, up here is what I'm talking about. Watch this thing fly through there. Right about there. See that? Now, something I, I want to note here, guys, is the fact that it's not a sun diver. 
okay? We don't typically see these comets or whatever this thing is going in that direction. Um, not, not here on this tool. Not usually, okay? I ain't saying it ain't ever happened because it most, most certainly has. Um, so I, I don't know what object that is. But I will say this, it's, it's between us and the sun. Because if it's not, if it's, if it's far enough out that it's behind the sun, that is a huge rock. <laughs> okay, or ice ball or whatever. So I'm having a hard time thinking that that thing ain't closer, like kind of in between us and the sun at some, at some distance. Okay, so that's where I'm at with that on that particular one. Now, I can take you over and show you Lasco C3, which is the exact same view, but it's zoomed out. has a wider view. But I, I went and looked at it, and it's just a little speck going across the screen. Okay, so it's almost useless for me to show it to you, because it's hard to see. Uh, most people wouldn't even see it on Lasco C3. I wouldn't even have looked for it unless I seen it here first. And that's how small it was. But you can clearly see, guys, that that's something going on there. Now, um, I'm going to take you over here to the next day, and I'm going to show you when this flare happened. It happened at 349, I believe, is the time. Now, when it did go, when it did happen, you can see the light. Now, remember, everything that's going on from that flare is behind that occulter. So, we're not going to get a real good look at it from this view, okay? Um, all we're going to do is we're going to see a, an increase in the brightness, okay? So, that's right before. That was at 348, and then bam! The, the flare happened, and you see what it did there? See how it kind of got a little bit more smooth and more light happened? Back it up there. And um, again, this wasn't this would not stay that, that bright that long, okay? Because, it's again, it traveled all the way from the sun to here in eight minutes. So we got, let's see here. We go from 4 o'clock, which is when we first seen it, to 412 so it was here and gone past the earth by the time it took another capture that's what i'm trying to say so you know we got lucky enough to be able to see it at least get bright on this particular camera but we can go look at it on stereo a which is a side view so let's go check that out and see what we can see um that would be this one here that's going to update any of the data it did i don't know what the heck is going on here but there it goes all right, and you can definitely see that something's going on right here. See that? Now, it's going to be highly pixelated. I'm not even going to mess with trying to show it to you guys there because, I mean, you can see it kind of get bright and move, but that's all you're going to see, okay, from a flare. Now, <clears throat> remember, the Earth is over on this, this direction, and we're looking from the satellite here. So that's why that, that would, and it came right at us, so... Um, I'll take you over to the video I took of it. Okay, this is the video I took of it. And this is, uh, again, this is S this is from SDO. Um, and it's looking at the, you know, it's looking at the sun. And what you're going to see, this is the 131 Angstrom. And this one really shows flares really well. Now, you've probably just seen that. Now, I zoomed in, and it's going to be real easy to see. Okay, right about there. See that? That's all that that flare looks like. Okay, until you slow it down. And um, so let me uh, see if I can't pause it at the right time. I should have used my other recorder there because I could have just drugged this thing through and been able to find it exactly. Dag on it. There it is. Okay. That's actually a good capture right there. See that? All right. So let me explain to you what's going on here. Um, basically, you have... The positive and negative uh, parts of the connection here of the sunspot itself and these the yeah the filaments <laughs> sorry guys uh, I'm having a really hard time right now my, my voice is still killing me right now um, anyway they, they got close enough together that they actually would touch and basically that's what you see as a flare bam it breaks boom there it blast off there right so what we're seeing and this, this presents, and it looks like an X, okay? Now, I've shown this before, but what you're seeing is, you're seeing these little hash marks, right? And they, they take the form of an X from the center of the, the flare itself. You can see it. It's kind of like this, right? Um, myself, when I first started researching this, I thought this is why they called them X flares. I want everybody to know that that's not correct, 
Okay, I was wrong in that aspect when I first started researching. This looks like an X. So I figured, well, you know, that's what they call X flares. No, an X flare is a very, very strong solar flare. It's the strongest we see. Okay, has nothing to do with the shape of the visual this thing gives us. Okay, this is a C class. Now, granted, this is a, in the in the middle there. I mean, it's not a small, small one, um, but you can definitely see that that it gave us that true. A solar flare signature right there um, I'm not sure if I can zoom in anymore yeah I can uh, but as you can see that's what happens right here's where basically that, that's the center of it you can see it. it this is actually a pretty good defined one and we haven't seen one like this in a while okay um, we had a we had an M class flare earlier this year um, but uh, this is probably right behind it the second strongest one we've had all year and it's August. That should say something, guys. Um, but I do think that we're starting to ramp up. Uh, I do think that we're going to get more and more activity, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And with all that data coming back over at Seeds, um, Scott sent me over a few of the, the the shots that he was taking and was and was looking at them again and putting them through the the filters and stuff and his technique that he uses now. And um, yeah, it's uh just like we were talking about yesterday, and like you said in his live stream. Stuff was there. Stuff was popping out, and that's why. Um, you know, we can take you over and show you the, the red view, guys. Um, but we don't get the black and white unless Seeds is providing that. Um, you know, we get cactus, but it's, you know, it's okay. But it still isn't as clear as what we get from Seeds. And that's why we like using that one, because we can, stuff is more defined and we can see more. So, just know that. And I, I explained that in my last video. Okay, guys, this is your electric field model. Um, this shows, you know, space weather's effect on our electrical grid. And um, we didn't see it a whole lot. Okay, so I looked at it, tried to look at it when the flare hit. And um, we seen a little bit of a blip, but then I figured out why. <laughs> the reason why is because the United States was on the dark side of the planet when that happened. It was at 349 UTC. So that means, you know, if it had happened 12 hours later... We probably would have seen it on this tool a little bit more. Um, it, I, I wish we had a tool we could look at from over there like this. But we don't. Um, they probably got them, but we don't get to see it. So um, so that's what's going on with that. And um, But, you know, it's not really a big deal, guys. We had radio mess-ups and stuff like that. But other than that, we really didn't see a whole lot from this flare. But it is another sign that we're upticking. Okay? This is a significant flare, okay? It's not a baby. It's not a full-blown adult. It's somewhere in the middle. And it did cause us radio issues. So that's a direct, you know, consequence of what happened that we can point to and say, hey, yeah, that, that's just the start of stuff. If we get a big, huge X flare, my gosh, you know, what's going to happen? But that's why we do what we do here, guys. But, yeah. So, um, anyway, guys, I am going to end it here. Um, God bless, Shua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.